Hi everyone, my name is Giselle. I'm 16. My sister Dawn is three years older than me. We used to get along really well. Now we don't speak to each other unless we have to. Let me tell you what happened. My dad made a lot of money in the stock market when he was young. Both my sister and I were born and raised in a mansion. Our favorite game was hide and seek because there were so many rooms in our house where we could hide. We had four nannies from four different countries so that we could learn different languages. Sometimes when we woke up, my mom would say, girls, let's go shopping. <laughs> we would jump on a plane to New York City and shop till we dropped. You see, we had a fairy tale life. Last year, unfortunately, it all came to an end. My dad used to own a big company that developed shopping malls. When a crisis hit the property market, he couldn't pay back the loans he took out from the banks. The banks confiscated not only the company's property, but also my dad's personal assets. They came to our house and took away all the furniture, my mom's jewelry, the paintings on the walls, and the luxury cars in the garage. After a while, they kicked us out of the house, too. That's how our fairy tale ended. We moved into a small apartment. My dad wanted to talk to us that first night. We've lost everything we had. We're going to have to build a new life from scratch, but don't worry, I've done it once before. And I was alone then. This time we'll do it together, he said. My mom and I were really moved. We hugged my dad with tears in our eyes, but my sister didn't join us. She told dad, I can't live like a poor person. You're the reason why we're in this mess. And that's why I hate you. My dad was really shocked. At first he didn't know what to say. Then looking really sad, he told her, you're right, it's all my fault, but give me some time. I'll fix everything. Dad had a little bit of money left. He wanted to use it to start a new business. He did some research. Finally, he decided to open a car wash. My mom and I wanted to make some money to help out too. She started giving piano lessons. I was doing translation work through freelance websites. I wish Dawn would have joined us. It was the time for our family to work together, but she wasn't able to accept the fact that the good old days were over. She had just started college. She was taking a bus that brought her from our house straight to school, but she complained all the time. One night she said, Dad, I can't take it anymore. I really need a car. A homeless guy sat next to me on the bus this morning. I had to get off and walk because I couldn't take the smell. My dad gently said, you can take my car if you like. I'll take the bus. We can't afford a new car right now. To this, Don said, Dad, are you calling that thing you drive around a car? Even the homeless guy wouldn't take that piece of garbage if you offered it to him and laughed at him. <laughs> dad couldn't get mad at my sister because he felt guilty. Okay, you're right. In that case, your birthday present this year will be a car, he said. Don was so happy she hugged him saying, oh, daddy, you rock. <laughs> Dad had just opened the car wash. We knew that he had invested every single penny he had into that business. How was he going to buy this car for Dawn? I couldn't understand how my sister could be so inconsiderate. Her birthday is April 16th. As the date approached, she was asking my dad what kind of car he was getting for her. He tried dodging the question saying, I want to surprise you. Finally, her birthday arrived. My mom woke up really early to prepare a beautiful breakfast. All around the house, she put little cards that said happy birthday. But Dawn didn't care about any of that. After getting up, the first thing she asked mom was, what kind of car did dad get me? I thought dad had gone to work, but it turned out he had gone out to bring the car he got for Dawn. He came in as we were having breakfast. Dawn jumped up saying, dad, where's my car? Dad gave her a little box with a smile on his face. She knew the keys were inside. She wanted to see the make of the car as soon as possible. She tore open the wrapping paper. She was happy when she saw the Kia logo on the key. Did you get me an SUV? Not the brand I was dreaming of, but thanks anyway, she said. Then she hurried outside. And we went after her. Dawn started bawling as soon as she saw the car, because my dad didn't get her an SUV, but the smallest model Kia had. I thought it was a really cute car, but my sister did not think so. She turned to my dad. So this is what you think I deserve? What is this, a toy car, she asked. My dad was really upset. This was what I could afford. Drive this for now. We'll get you the car you want when we start doing better. But Don wasn't listening to him. Burning with rage, she started screaming at him. Dad, today is my birthday. 
Do you understand? My birthday. I wanted to be happy for just one day a year, but you couldn't even make that happen. How can you call yourself a father? I don't think you deserve to be called one. After she was finished, she threw the key at my dad and ran home. I'd never seen my dad so upset. He fell down to his knees. He held his head. My mom went to him. She held him. They stayed that way for some time. Then suddenly my dad got up. He picked up the car keys from the floor. He got into the car and quickly drove away without saying a word. My sister didn't leave her room until the evening. My mom and I were preparing dinner. Dawn came out with eyes bloodshot from crying. She looked surprised. She said dad called her to say, come outside. I have a big surprise for you. When we came outside, we couldn't believe our eyes. My dad was standing next to a brand new Porsche SUV. Dawn jumped into my dad's arms, screaming with happiness. Then she ran to her car and got in. My mom and I were so confused. Yes, this would have been a regular birthday present in the old days. But it was impossible for dad to be able to afford such an expensive SUV in our current situation. It wasn't until a few weeks later that we found out what had happened. My sister adored her new car. She started chauffeuring us around just to have an excuse to drive it. She was driving me to school and my mom to the homes of her students. One day, she came to pick me up after school. When I got in the car, she said, shall we stop by dad's work? We can get my car washed too. It hasn't been washed since I got it. I was still not talking to her because I was so mad. Mm -hmm. I just nodded. When we arrived at dad's car wash, the man in the front took the car and drove it inside for the wash. Dawn said, let's get cupcakes. Dad loves them. There was a bakery right across the street. We went and got them. Then we returned to the car wash. We looked into dad's office, but he wasn't there. We knew the guy at the register. Hey, Fred, where's dad? We asked. He pointed outside. We couldn't believe our eyes when we saw what he was showing us. My dad was washing Dawn's SUV. The strangest thing was that he was wearing blue overalls and yellow rubber boots. He was dressed like all the other workers. I had to ask Fred, why is dad washing cars? So you two don't know, he said. When we said, what should we know? He said, your dad sold the car wash a couple of weeks ago. He doesn't own it anymore. Now he works washing the cars. We were all surprised, but he said that he had to sell it right away because he needed the money. It's a shame, really, because the business was doing really well. My dad sold the car wash in order to be able to buy my sister the car she wanted. Otherwise, there was no way he would have been able to afford it. This was really weird, but he was washing the very Porsche he had to sell his business to buy. Both my sister and I were completely shocked. Dawn was very remorseful, but of course she couldn't turn back the clock. That night, she apologized to my dad again and again. My dad said, I'm responsible for everything we live through. I shouldn't have put my family in this position. You deserve that SUV. But thankfully, my sister had understood her mistake. No, dad, I'm a spoiled brat. I don't deserve anything. I wish I had realized it before. Even if you forgive me, I won't forgive myself for a long time. My sister never touched the SUV again. She got a job washing dishes at a restaurant. She goes there after school and works until late at night. She doesn't earn much, but everything she makes, she brings home without touching a single penny. By the way, my dad refused to sell the SUV no matter how much my mom insisted. We have a brand new Porsche SUV parked outside our apartment. I'm sure my sister feels even worse every time she sees it. Who knows? Maybe that's why my dad keeps it there. Hi, guys. Unfortunately, I can't tell you my name because some people might recognize me. I'm not ashamed of what I went through. In fact, I'm pretty proud of myself. But my parents might be uncomfortable with what I'll be sharing. That's why I decided to keep my identity a secret. I hope you understand. Three years ago, when I was 14, my dad owned a car wash that he had opened with a partner. Everything was great. We were doing very well financially. My brother and I started going to private school. We moved to a fancy area. It's so easy to get used to good things. We'd adapted to our new lifestyle so well, we soon felt as if we'd be living like that for years. And then one day, it all came crashing down. The police raided my dad's work. It turned out that his partner was using the car wash to launder money. We found out that he'd been dealing drugs for years. The police arrested my dad too, but they let him go when they realized that he didn't know anything about the illegal business. 
However, the car wash was confiscated because of his partner. Naturally, my dad was really traumatized by what happened. He couldn't accept that he'd been duped and that he had been part of something illegal. All of a sudden, our lives turned upside down. He pulled himself together a few months later and opened a new car wash in another part of town. Unfortunately, things didn't go as expected. He had to close down after a while. He had taken out a bank loan for the new business. When he couldn't pay it back, we went bankrupt. We lost everything we had. It was a very difficult period for our family. I wanted to help out, so I got a job at a restaurant run by my friend's father. I was working there after school, washing dishes for the first time in my life. It was not the best job, but I was happy to be making money. I would work until the restaurant closed at night and wake up early to go to school the next day, no matter how tired I was. I was working six days a week with only one day off. I used to spend all my free time playing games on my computer, but now I only used it for schoolwork. One day, a friend told me that a new map had been added to a game that I really loved. I wanted to take a quick look. When my dad came into my room, he saw me playing the game. He got really angry. Your mom and I stay up all night trying to figure out what to do. We can barely sleep. But you're just playing your games as if nothing happened, he said. He accused me of being selfish. He kept getting angrier. Finally, he said, when you buy your own computer, you can play as much as you want, and took away my laptop. That was probably the worst day of my life. I cried for hours under the covers because I felt it was so unfair. Then, all of a sudden, I stopped. I started telling myself, don't pity yourself, don't pity yourself. It was almost dawn. I promised myself I'd never wallow in self-pity again. I was going to do everything I could to keep this promise. I went to school without getting any sleep. When my girlfriend saw me, she could tell that something was up. I told her what had happened with my dad. At first, she was really upset, but when I told her about my decision, she said she was proud of me. She looked at me and said, you're one of the funniest people I know, and I think you can make money from it. I have an idea. I can help you if you want to try it. I didn't go to work after school. We went to my girlfriend's house. A couple of hours later, I was sitting in front of her computer wearing a chicken mask. I made an account on Twitch and started live streaming. I was playing just like everyone else, but there was something different about me. I was clucking with a mask on. It was my girlfriend's idea to create a half-human, half-chicken character. The mask was her brother's. I was clucking and making jokes like I was a chicken. My girlfriend was cracking up. Her laughter was very encouraging, so I performed much better than I thought I would. It was like I was on a show. Two hours in, I had reached 500 viewers. You wouldn't believe the sounds I made when I got my first donation. It was a perfect night. I was filled with hope. I could quit my job at the restaurant thanks to my girlfriend. I don't want to belittle that job, but I was sure that I could make so much more money on Twitch and much more quickly. Things went even better than I expected in the next few days. My audience grew a lot, but nobody knew who I was because I was using the nickname Big Bird and wearing a mask all the time. To them, I was a large, funny bird. But there was also the beautiful girl whom the camera never showed, but whose laughter they could hear. I didn't tell my family that I was on Twitch. I wanted to tell my mom and my brother, but I was too scared of my dad finding out, so I didn't say anything. They all thought that I was still working at the restaurant. I wondered if I had told my dad that it was possible to make money by playing games, would he have lightened up a little bit? I didn't think so. Parents don't really like children playing video games. Whenever they can, they try to stop them. I'm sure of it, and I can understand why. But I think my dad was obsessed with the whole idea of games. I think he unleashed his hatred of games that day by using our family problems as an excuse. One night, something really interesting happened. I was live streaming as usual with my mask on. At one point, I looked at the chat window on the screen. Big Bird, do you want to get the biggest donation of your life in exchange for removing your mask? The message was from one of my most loyal fans, Ringo Starr. He made a donation every day. I clucked. <laughs> biggest donation of my life? I just hatched from an egg not that long ago. The only thing you can do is give me the biggest donation of my life so far, I said. You're right. Okay, let's do this. I'm sure it's not just me, but everyone who's watching you now that wants to see your face. 
Will you take off your mask if everyone makes the biggest donation they can? He replied. I stopped for a second. I looked at my girlfriend. She shook her head, telling me not to do it. I knew that there would be no turning back if I said yes, but we were live. I could just stop streaming right after taking off the mask. I had only wanted to hide my identity mm. from my dad, not anyone else. My dad is the least tech-savvy person in the world. Twitch was like another planet to him. There was no way he was going to find out about what happened here. I took a deep breath. I said, well, let's see the donations. Prove to me that you really want to see my face. If you convince me, then I'll be a human for a moment. As soon as I said this, the donations started pouring in. My girlfriend slammed the door and left. I didn't really care because I was so overwhelmed by the amount of donations. They just kept on coming. I waited for a while after the donation notifications stopped. I couldn't see the viewers, but I was sure they were all holding their breath. I thanked them by clucking. All right, you've convinced me. I'm taking off my mask for 20 seconds. Then I'm going to log off. But tomorrow, I'll be back as Big Bird, I said. I waited for a moment. I took off the chicken mask and looked at the camera. I showed my face clearly. I winked at the viewers. Then I logged off. I was feeling really <laughs> weird. I looked at how much money I got. Wow. It was like a dream. Just then, my girlfriend stormed into the room. I told you not to do it. The mystery is gone. Why would anyone watch you now? She said, yelling. I told her that the reason why I had agreed to put on the mask was not to be mysterious, but to avoid being found out by my dad. Look at all this money. Don't you think it was worth it? I said, hugging her. She looked at me and said, I hope you don't regret it. The next day, I went straight home after school. My dad smiled when he saw me. Do you have the day off? Your brother went to the dentist with your mom. Come on, let's have coffee together and chat, he said as he walked into the kitchen. He came back from the kitchen, saw the money on the coffee table, and was totally shocked. I asked, will this be enough for you to pay off your loan? My dad was still in shock. I don't know, probably. But where did this money come from? Whose is it? He asked. It's yours, I said proudly. Please don't ask me how I made it. All I can tell you is that I earned it, and I didn't do anything illegal. He sat next to me and put his arms around me. You made it online, right? Oh no, sorry, not online. I should say from games. I know you don't work at the restaurant anymore, Big Bird, he said. He was smiling so wide, I could see all his teeth. It turned out that my girlfriend's dad called him one night. The kids are not doing anything bad, but my daughter said that you don't know about it. I thought you should know. But don't be mad. You should be proud of your son. He's doing a really good job, he said. My dad had been watching me ever since. I was so surprised when he told me his favorite jokes from my streams. I never thought he would like my sense of humor, but the day before, he fell asleep while he was watching me, so he didn't know about me taking off the mask and getting all those donations. He got really emotional when I told him about it. They gave you all this money just to see your face? And you're giving it all to me, he asked? Yes, I was giving it to him. I was so proud that I was able to earn this money to help my dad pay off his loan. The next evening, I was in my girlfriend's room to live stream for the last time. Because my dad and I agreed that from now on, I would do it from my house. But there was a surprise waiting for me. Even though I had the chicken mask on and I was making killer jokes, I had less than 100 viewers. Yes, the mystery was really gone now that everybody knew what I looked like. Even Ringo Starr, who started the whole donation thing to see my face, only stopped by for a few moments. After that, I tried wearing other animal masks and inventing different characters, but nothing worked. I'd lost all my followers, so after a while, I stopped live streaming altogether. But I was so happy with what I'd accomplished during my short-lived fame that I didn't care. Anyways, I don't really have time for anything else these days because I'm spending my evenings with my dad at the internet cafe that we opened. <laughs>